Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Kai Lee. I'm the provost of the university, and I just want to use this opportunity to welcome all of you, and I'm so glad we can do it in person, to the 2022 NT Trust and Competition Meeting, this conference here, which is hosted by the George J. Stiegler Center for the Study of the Economy and the State at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. The Stiegler Center was founded 45 years ago uh, as a partnership between our university's Department of Economics and the law school. And the hallmark of the center then and now has been really to focus on interdisciplinary research and to make the connections between politics and economics and regulations marketing among other topics. And this particular conference that you are gathered here today really help exemplifies the purpose of the Sickler Center. As we can see that many top scholars representing from different disciplines and different countries from around the world are gathered here alongside with policymakers, practitioners, and other stakeholders. And so I'm really grateful um, and happy to see all of you here. The importance and the timeliness of this topic um, does not really need any further clarification. And this has been the case for other conferences that is put up by the center in the past. And I find it particularly befitting for this discussion to be here today at the University of Chicago. As you know, the university and the often referred to as the Chicago Principle of Economics were the foundations of ref reforms um, in antitrust policy that took place many decades ago. The fact that the university continues to be engaged in these conversations many, many years later is a highlighting our commitment to vigorous inquiry as well as open dialogue and really a, a commitment to challenging conventional wisdom, and you are here to do that. So I trust this will play out in various ways in the next two days at the conference as you really gather and work and explore what is going to come next in antitrust competition policies and beyond. I would like to take this opportunity to thank three individuals uh, from the Booth School of Business for organizing this event. Luigi Singalis, the Robert C. McCormick Distinguished Service Professors of Entrepreneurship and Finance, and George G. Rindler, Faculty Fellows and Faculty Director of the Stigler Center, Guy Rodick, um, Clinical Professors of Strategic Management, and in front of me, Filippo Lantieri, Postdoctoral Fellow at the ATH Zurich Center for Law and Economics, and research fellow at the Stickler Center. And thank you to you all, the invited speakers, the participants in this important conference. I am sure that interesting conversation will unfold in the next two days, and I wish you a very productive conference. Thank you. Is it working well? Yeah. So thank you very much, Provost Lee, for these great welcome remarks. Good morning to all of you here in the room and to all of you watching us elsewhere. I remember when we last hosted this conference in the same room three years ago, discussing what an ideal regulation for digital markets um, would look like. It, it really is a pleasure to have everyone back here in person. For this, we also need to thank the John S. and the James L. Knight Foundation for offering the financial support that made this in-person meeting a possibility. So thank you, and thank you, um, John, as well, who's representing the foundation here today. This is the fifth Stigler Center Annual Antitrust and Competition Conference, and this year we gather to discuss the future of antitrust policy. Yet, it is difficult to discuss the future without considering where we are coming from. So, to give you a sense of the changes in the antitrust world, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the, first the time when I first started studying antitrust. I was an undergraduate law student in Brazil some 12 years ago. I'm not that old to indulge in memories, but just bear with me for a second. I promise there's a, there's a reason for it. 
Uh, I think there are two aspects that looking in retrospect particularly stand out about that time. The first is the stability of US antitrust policy. Indeed, many prominent scholars were saying the antitrust was boring or the antitrust was even dead. We heard these very words from Professor Richard Posner in this room just as, as early as 2017, actually, as late as 2017. And in a way, I don't think they were wrong. Those times were likely the height of the Chicago School Triumph or the Chicago Harvard School Triumph. And, uh, and, and in 2004, Justice Scalia had written in Trinco that the charge of monopoly prices for at least, at least the short term, so maybe even the long term, was a central element of the free market system. He then slammed the door shut for refu on refusal to deal cases. And this was a unanimous 9-0 opinion. It had also been just a couple of years since the Supreme Court ha had reversed the per se rule of per reason in the sale price maintenance in leading. And uh, this further weakened case against vers vertical restrictions by dominant companies. So someone entering this fascinating world as I was entering, uh, it really seemed that antitrust was mostly, mostly, about punishing cartels and avoiding mergers to monopoly. Companies could get away with doing almost, almost, no? everything else. The second noteworthy aspect, which I think is remarkable, was the total dominance of US antitrust policy in the world. So here was me in Brazil, a very large uh, and economically important middle income country, reading the horizontal merger guidelines, reading Trinco, reading Legion, and really being in awe and thinking like, whoa, the US has really, really figured it all out. It's like, I, I don't think we studied European law at all. I don't think we studied any other country law at all. We studied a bit of Brazilian law. And I really had a great teacher. My teacher was not to blame for saying like, oh no, actually, he was bad. He was a good teacher. It was just that back then, a solid, modern antitrust policy was US policy. This was it. This is what the world should emulate elsewhere. So fast forward to today. And it's impressive how much this world has changed. Some seven years ago, we started to really notice that the antitrust policy they had all the world had some issues. And impressively enough, I think we can say something about these changes by relying on the many discussions that took place in this very room at different instances of this conference. Their titles, I think, tell a bit of their story. So in 2017, we hosted, is there a concentration problem in America? In 2018, the discussion was on digital platforms and concentration. Then in 2019, we covered digital platforms, market, and democracy, a path forward. And finally, in 2020 and 2021, in the height of the COVID pandemic, we had a series of online webinars on the connection between monopolies and politics. And this brings us to 2022, antitrust, what's next? And why what's next? I think that different people in this room, they're gonna have different answers. For me, it's what's next for two reasons that I think are connected to these memories that I just shared with you. The first is that unlike 10 years ago, antitrust is no longer stable. Antitrust is no longer boring. Actually, on the contrary, it now seems that everything is fair game for antitrust policy. Antitrust is now being asked to tackle problems around freedom of speech, the political influence of large companies, labor concentration, inequality, privacy, the Green Revolution, national security, the COVID pandemic, and inflation, just among some topics that I, other topics that I could be listing, listing here. Yet, as George Stigler, the namesake of this center, would readily remind us, a public policy cannot do everything. It needs to have guidelines and limiting principles that enable public accountability from society. Otherwise, policy changes may end up doing more harm than good. So the fact that regulatory capture exists and that it is rightfully a major reason for concern when you're talking about public policy should not, though, be a reason for inaction. It is too easy to shout capture as an empty slogan and then forget that the ultimate form of regulatory capture may be the total absence of governmental intervention in areas where governmental intervention is needed. In my view, what Stigler's seminal lessons really do is to challenge us to design better public policies and more transparent and accountable institutions. This incredible cohort of scholars, policymakers, civil society representatives, journalists, and all others will discuss many interesting and fascinating topics in the next two days. As we do, I think we should always keep in mind that it's our role, it's our role as a community to come up with guidelines and limiting principles that can help ensure that antitrust policy continues to improve welfare as it improves beyond its uh, boring core. The second reason for what's next is because, unfortunately, 
US antitrust policy must leave its comfort zone and move forward. The real question should be to where. The sad reality is that it's very hard to quantify how much American international goodwill and soft power has been squandered over the past decades in many different areas, antitrust being one of them. Nowadays, when I look at Brazilian antitrust syllabi or the syllabi of competition law courses in other countries, it's sad to say that no one's in awe of the US anymore. It really seems that US antitrust policy has lost its real backbone, the real reason why it led the world. And this was its ability to adapt to changes in market conditions and academic scholarship before everyone else did. And in doing so, leading the rest of the pack. I'm a proud holder of a U Chicago PhD, or JSD as we call it in the law school, and a strong believer that free markets are the best mechanisms to improve people's lives. Yet, free markets need sound antitrust policy, and a sound global antitrust policy needs the US pushing us onwards. Antitrust is currently at a once in a generation inflection point. This is not a bumper sticker or something that you put on your car or tell someone that you don't know much about the policy. This is reality. It's already happening elsewhere in the world. I hope that in five years, when we host the 10th annual Stigler, Stigler Antitrust and Competition Conference, we'll look back on the next two days and say that they indicated solid paths for the evolution of US competition policy. We need to recover that core that allowed us to adapt policy to reality. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to the discussion. And with this, I pass it to Henry. Thank you so much for, for moderating the first time. Thank you.